What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today, we're going to take a look at the Power Apps Monitor. And the monitor is really useful for troubleshooting when you're building Power Apps. So there's monitor that can be used for Canvas apps, and now there's monitor that can be used for model-driven apps. So today, we're going to take a look at the model-driven apps and how to use the monitor in model-driven apps. So I wrote a blog about this. Uh, go ahead and check it out. It details all the instructions that we're going to go through in this demo here. Um, but we're going to take a walk through in the demo. It's really simple to use. And the starting place that you'll want to be is in the Power Apps Maker Portal. And basically, if you select uh, one of your apps, you'll see here in the top bar here, if I go ahead and select the Sales Hub app, for example, uh, we get these new buttons that appear. And here is the Monitor button, OK? So clicking on this one is going to open this uh, monitor application. And so this is something that you can just go ahead and run. And it's really useful because it's going to show us all kinds of information. And as we go through and click through each of the, the records in the app and we navigate around, it's going to give us all kinds of uh, very useful uh, feedback. And we're going to go through and see that working very shortly. So to get this working, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click play model driven app here and it's going to go and open the app and it's going to be connected to the app. So we're going to have the monitor and the app connected to each other. And we get this, uh, this little pop-up dialogue here and it says, join monitor debug session. You are connecting to a monitor debug session. Those in the session will see events generated by the app, including any data. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click join here and we can see here that the, the Sales Hub app has opened as it normally would, and we get this little message at the top, and it says, this app is currently connected to a monitor session. To end the monitor session, just go ahead and close the app. Okay, so that's how you stop the monitor from running. So if I go and click back here into the monitor tab, we can see here we have one, we have a couple of events coming through now. And uh, so we've, we've, we have the form checker that's run, we have this sitemap checker that's run. If we just go ahead and click into each of these, we'll see that on the right here, it, it gives us all kinds of details uh, about uh, what's going on. So not a whole lot of useful stuff in there. We have this formula tab as well, nothing in there as well. Let's go and click the sitemap checker and see. Um, so we actually have a little bit more information here on this one. And, uh, but you know, nothing, nothing super useful in terms of, let's say troubleshooting or performance or anything like that. Okay. So, uh, let's go back over to our running session and now let's go and click on accounts here and it's going to give me a list of, uh, all my accounts that I see in the system. And if we go back to the monitor now, we see we have another record coming through here. And then, uh, this kind of does give us a little bit of more information, let's say, okay. Now, uh, let's kind of, let's kind of get some more activity going here. So, so one easy way to do that is to run a script that's actually going to break that we know is going to break. Right. So what I've done over here is I have this, um, solution here and I have a couple of components in the solution. I have the account form and I have written a script here, account on load. And if we go and take a look at this script here, so here's the script. And if I just go and edit this, what I have is I have a simple console.log statement, but you can see here, it's actually, I've actually misspelled the word log, right? So I've actually put log one on the end. And so that's going to throw a JavaScript error. Okay. So when the, and I've wired this up to the onload of the account form. So when I click into the account form, we should see an error like this occur. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and cancel that. Okay. So now I'm back in the sales hub app and I'm going to go ahead and select uh, one of these records here. So I'll select this account record and we can see that we get this script error, right? So if we click on the details here, it says console.log1 is not a function. Okay. So now if we go back into the monitor app, uh, we can see here that there's a lot more of these uh, records here that are showing up in the monitor. And we can see here it's found uh, this error here. So it says exception in customer logic. That's the type of category of the error. And then we have console.1. Uh, console.log1 is not a function. And if we go and click on it, and then we see on the right-hand side here, uh, it actually tells us here that uh, that's the error. Okay, so now let's try to get a different error to surface. Uh, now I'm going to go into my web resource. I'm just gonna go back into here. 
And instead of a console error, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in here some code that's going to do a web API call just to retrieve multiple on the account. And you can see here, I'm actually going to try to retrieve a name one field, which does not exist. So the actual name is the name field, right? Not name one. So this is going to come back with an error from the web API, okay? Uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and click OK here, and then we'll uh, do a save and publish and and publish and so what we're going to see here is is an example where the monitor is actually going to show the the, the network error this time okay so i'm going to go back into the app here let's close down f12 and i'm just going to refresh this to go grab the latest code okay and what we'll do actually we'll go back to the monitor what i'll do is i'll clear this data out so that's useful if you have too many kind of events that are being displayed. And let's go back in here and just do another refresh. And then we'll it'll just be a little bit easier to see what's going on in the monitor here. Uh, so we can see here that some events are coming through and a lot of events are coming through now. And what I can do is just filter the result here. I'm gonna filter by error, click apply. And we can see here we have a bad request that's showing. Uh, if I go and click on this, uh, it actually shows the data source and it's the select name equals one, right? So we're getting a bad request 400 error coming back. And um, so very useful way of seeing errors that are occurring, right? Let's go ahead and just clear this out. Go and clear the filter, get back to where we were. Uh, but tons of, tons of events that we can just take a look at here. You could also kind of look at the time it takes to run each of these events. Uh, look at the duration here, right? So some some durations might be uh, significantly larger than others, let's say. And, uh, you know, from there, you can kind of determine if something's taking a really long time and optimize that so that the pages load faster for the users. Uh, another interesting operation here is the, the full load operation. So this one actually tells us when a page is loaded. So you can see here we have a, a duration here. And the final thing that I wanna show you guys is we have this invite button here. So if I go ahead and click on invite, I can invite other people to actually look at this session. So this could be useful for troubleshooting as well. Uh, you get more people looking at what's going on and you can troubleshoot what's happening to other people. So if I were to go and type a name of someone that I wanted to share this session with, I'm gonna type in uh, Alan here and select Alan Steiner. So now Alan actually, it says here, uh, I can copy and send people their unique secure link so they can join the session. So only they can join it with the secure link. And the link is going to expire in 60 minutes anyway, okay? So here's the link. If I go ahead and just click on this here, now I've taken a copy of the link. Okay, so we're now logged in here as Alan. And so if I just go ahead and paste in that URL and hit enter. Uh, we can see here that the monitor loads and we're in a guest session. And now we'll start to be able to see these events that are in the same session, okay? So back over here in the Sales Hub app, if I just were to hit refresh so that we get some more of the events going back into the monitor. So that's just gonna go ahead and load here. We can see that Alan's now getting those events, right? So he'll be able to come in here and he could Theoretically, for example, go in here and search by error and take a look and say, hey, uh, you have a 400 here. Uh, you also have a 404 that's happening. Uh, so this could be contributing to the problems that you're seeing. So that's it, guys. That's the Monitor app for model-driven apps. Looks like it's pretty useful and it should be able to help you with finding out where errors are and pot potentially helping with performance issues as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.